It is a travesty of sorts that the search results of Ram Naomi from any popular news website show up violent information rather than news of celebration. Incidents of hate speech, arson and riots were reported in Bihar and West Bengal even on 3rd April, which is 4 days after the 30th March when the violence related to the Ram Naomi celebrations erupted across India. So keep in mind that the largest religious procession for instance Ganesh Chaturthi uh, in Mumbai and Pune etc and the Durga Puja in West Bengal in Calcutta and and, and other parts of West Bengal and and so on and so forth right the largest procession there is never any incident never so so if somebody tells you that oh we are held hostage and we can't do it and we can't cope with it and all i uh, find that rather difficult to believe Incidents of hate speech, arson and riots were reported in Bihar and West Bengal even on 3rd April which is 4 days after the 30th March when the violence related to the Ram Navmi celebrations erupted across India particularly from Bihar there were worrying reports about a mosque being burned down one such report by Maktoub's Mir Faisal highlights how a Hindutva mob set fire to Madrasa Azizia which is the oldest madrasa and library in Bihar Sharif in Nalanda district of Bihar The madrasa contained more than 4500 books which were destroyed in the fire. Not just that, social media is agog with videos and images from Gujarat, Maharashtra, Bihar, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Jharkhand and West Bengal where Hindutva activists in Ram Navmi processions with lathi, hockey sticks, swords and guns are seen creating ruckus in Muslim dominated localities. These processions or rallies are called shobha yatras. A shobha yatra which translates to shining or glorious procession are different from traditional rath yatras which are organized by temples and are generally limited to nearby areas the shobha yatras are grand processions of pomp and ceremony attempting to cover entire cities involving cavalcades of vehicles each carrying dozens of men shouting slogans and frequently wielding arms but the modern shobha yatras are also equipped by what we colloquially call the loud dj music huge speakers playing techno music and the songs which can be qualified under the relatively new phenomena of hindutva pop indian hindutva pop has made people turn violent against muslims they played these songs on the dj systems with swords in their hands some of these popular songs call for their killing Last year such shobha yatras and subsequent violence took place in Khargon in Madhya Pradesh and Jahangirpuri of Delhi among other places. This year violence due to shobha yatras was observed in Bihar, West Bengal and other places. Today in the video we discuss if the phenomena is new or has it manifested over time in India. To talk about this we will be joined by advocate Chandruday Singh a Supreme Court lawyer who once was a journalist too. Mr CEO Singh recently has come out with a report on the Ram Navmi violence which happened last year across Indian states. The foreword of this report is written by Justice Rohinton Nariman, the former Supreme Court judge. In this detailed analysis, CEO Singh makes some striking points about last year's Ram Navmi violence, which can be used for describing this year's violence as well. Talking about the nature of the Ram Navmi violence the report states that the processions or shobha yatras concertedly targeted places of worship by gathering in front of mosques and chanting anti-muslim slogans either at the same time as namaz was being offered or at the breaking of the fast after sunset thereby ensuring that the confrontation would coincide with the largest possible number of muslim being present and vulnerable The processions used offensive slogans and music that openly called for violence against non-Hindus and particularly the Muslim community. What are being attempted to be passed off as simply religious slogans have in fact direct political messaging. They are calls that have accompanied mob lynchings and pogroms. To understand more about this phenomena of violence culminating after the passing of a religious procession, we have with us Supreme Court advocate Mr. Chandruday Singh. In his report C U Singh has said that this kind of violence is not a new phenomena. Post independence India has faced numerous communal riots in diverse parts under different political regimes. And the vast majority of these have been caused by deliberate choice of communally sensitive routes by processionists and inability of the police in dealing with such demands or even their collusion and connivance in licensing such routes. 
Such instances happened in the 60s in Sholapur, in the 70s in Mahar, Jalgaon, and also in the late 80s in Bhagalpur and Kota. Although the history is old, the state response to these acts of violence has changed. I welcome Mr. C. U. Singh to the wire and ask this first up that what change does he see in the response of the state and policy of these Shobha Yatras? Uh, well, there are a few changes, but um, it's not one single change. I would say the first uh, change is that um, the the cause and effect. The, let me put it this way. I'm sorry. I'll just go back a moment. The cause and effect between processions. Leading to riots that is very well established, and that I said right from 1860 when Macaulay framed the Indian Penal Code. One of the illustrations he he uh, framed in Section 188 was where a, a a person defies a police order not to take a religious procession down a particular road. Then he uh, and that uh, defiance leads to riots. Uh, that would be um, uh, he would then be guilty of the offence under under that Section 188 of defiance of Public orders. So, if this is something uh, which was en envisaged or realized, it was important enough in 1860 to be made uh, give, given as an illustration of an offence uh, under the Indian Penal Code. So, you can you can imagine that this is not something new. What has happened of late is that uh, that 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 uh, examination of cause and effect has given way to an uh, a, a presumption. That anybody who obstructs a, a procession is guilty, and therefore reprisals must take place immediately. A collective punishment must be imposed on those who, quote unquote, obstructed the procession. So, so the administrative response today is, uh, especially in the last two years, has been that uh, 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 immediately it is said, without before any investigation takes place on the day of the riot or the next day, it is said. That stone pelting was indulged in by the residents of that area or the the people who were in that area to prevent to obstruct the procession. They indulged in stone stone pelting. Therefore, action should be taken against the stone pelters. And then immediately action uh, follows. Uh, sometimes by way of bulldozers, sometimes by way of uh, uh, you know uh, whatever it may be arrests and so on and so forth. So. The the uh, uh, role of the administration has changed very uh, very strongly in that respect. Two is that well, whereas earlier the roots used to be uh, at, at least monitored and strictly laid down, the administrative response has been to look the other way or to uh, to close an eye to this and to allow the processions to go on, though they are heavily and overtly armed. And the third thing which has changed is that that as opposed to Throwing of gulal and all which happened in the Mahad riots and so on, uh, or, and shouting, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sort of uh, abusive slogans. Now they carry gigantic, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, studio size or, or auditorium size, uh, you know, uh, loudspeakers with with amplifiers on flatbed trucks, on huge, you know, 20 20 ton flatbed trucks, uh, uh, and DJs are there, and there is very obnoxious music which is played at. Blaring uh, sound levels, and this is done by parking them. This whole procession will stop typically, uh, you know, uh, at a time when the the last evening namaz, uh, where the where the roza is uh, is uh, um, uh, broken, and uh, and after breaking the roza after the last namaz, when they they all spill out on onto the streets, is the time when this uh, procession will park itself there for one hour, two hours, three hours. In all likelihood, would never have been allowed in the past, or if they had been allowed, they would have definitely led to repercussions in the sense of you know commissions of inquiry. Today, it is normalized. Well, uh, the uh, the mechanism for an inquiry for an all-embracing inquiry doesn't exist in India. Uh, for instance, the Justice Sri Krishna Commission. In the Mumbai riots after nine, uh, of January 1993, uh, after the demolition of Babri Masjid in December 92, uh, was a very painstaking inquiry by a sitting judge of the Bombay High Court. He found uh, 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 great culpability by, by of the then Shiv Sena and uh, uh, collusion by the then government. Uh, it was a Congress government, and they they sort of had uh, either colluded or had uh, had uh, uh, you know the the police force was found to be. Highly collusive, uh, uh, you know, and and very sympathetic to the Shiv Sena. Uh, 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 exceedingly detailed report running into 
thousands of pages after interviewing hundreds of witnesses and so on and so forth was just uh, consigned to uh, to history it was it is consigned as pages of history uh, it it uh, led to nothing um, uh, no no action was uh, ultimately taken on that basis but when you say that could there be a national commission of inquiry i don't really see uh, uh, that happening because uh, unless the government at the center were to uh, uh, you know uh, 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 appoint a commission of inquiry and and uh, here the government has a, a sort of vested interest in in not inquiring into this and allowing this bulldozer culture to to, to prevail so um, uh, it's it's not likely to happen and if it were to happen it would just result again in a in a uh, dead piece of paper the only way in which a genuine inquiry can take place were would be if the supreme court was to intervene and the supreme court was to monitor an inquiry by truly independent uh, people to investigate and to make a report and to then take action as the supreme court of india that is the only way it could happen but again that is in the realm of uh, theory unless you know uh, the court was to rise to that so in uh, i i don't want uh, you know i i don't want to get into a political uh, sort of thicket of political issues but uh, in states which are opposition rule let me put it that way uh, where these uh, uh, riots have been fermented even last year the subject matter of my report was 2022 and there were uh, out of those nine states where there were serious incidents four of them were opposition rule five of them were uh, five of them counting delhi because the police comes under the um, uh, um, bjp so you could say that they were five of them were uh, ruled by the majority and there were three smaller states um, um, but but uh, uh, so it, it's not as though it didn't uh, it it didn't cut across party lines it did cut across party lines the reason may be different the reason this year for instance in uh, to foment riots in west bengal and uh, bihar maybe to to uh, from the point of view of those who are the fomenters of the riot the reason may be to discredit the government and to claim that there's a breakdown of law and order in those states and the, law, the states are incapable of dealing in fact the statements just made in bihar uh, uh, by the union home minister lead uh, support that uh, theory he said that uh, that you bring us in and you won't see these riot as long as you don't bring us in uh, uh, you know the this is a uh, government which is incapable of handling law and order and therefore riots take place as far as the states are concerned the failure of of uh, west bengal and bihar is to not control the processions at the outset to not control them by controlling their routes and by strictly monitoring their routes and ensuring that they are not armed in telangana last year when all this was uh, was, was at its height there was a very serious bid made by some very powerful hindutva groups to uh, uh, engage with the to to uh, you know uh, have the routes going through particular areas to uh, pass particular very large mosques etc etc uh, this was refused by the commissioner of police of uh, of hyderabad obviously because he must have uh, because the state must have taken a conscious decision whether it was the chief minister level or home minister level or whatever cabinet level or whatever we don't know but there was obviously a concerted decision by the state not to allow uh, this to happen so the commissioner of police gave only one route in hyderabad it was a very long route but he said all procession the first applicant he gave them the route and he said all subsequent applicants will follow this route alone and nobody will be allowed to start from wherever they want to start or start from where a particular mandir or a particular location and end at a particular location no there you if you want to have a procession you have to join this same route otherwise uh, you won't be allowed in the town of bensa where there had been serious uh, outbreaks of communal violence in 2020 and 2021 not in not in the ramnavami time but generally there had been some incidents there the uh, uh, station house officer and the head of police of that of that region refused permission altogether they said sorry we will not allow any procession now all these hindutva groups challenged it before the uh, uh, telangana high court and justice lalita kanaganti before whom this challenges came she said she said that there's a constitutional right to ca- carry out a religious procession and therefore you can't stop them from having a procession in bensa but she said 
that the uh, commissioner of police in uh, in hyderabad has done the right thing to lay down 23 very strict conditions to allow only one route she said everybody all the other processionists either you join that route or don't don't have a procession but i will not allow you to go to uh, any other route and i will not allow you to deviate from what the commissioner of police has laid down she said for bensa she said she told the government leader that go and get instruction and come back to me within one hour as to what route will be followed and what route they can allow because i'm overruling the the refusal of permission but i will allow the police to lay down very strict conditions and lay down a strict route so the same 23 conditions imposed in in hyderabad were imposed uh, for bensa and the route was laid down by the station officer it was monitored there were huge processions on 10th of uh, april 2022 massive processions 15 20000 in hyderabad in one procession etc etc large processions in bensa all went without a single incident they went absolutely peacefully so the 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 proof of the pudding is is in the eating i mean here it can be done it is done it is done all over the country look keep in mind that the largest religious processions take place at for instance ganesh chaturthi uh, in mumbai and pune etc at the durga puja in uh, in uh, uh, west bengal in calcutta and, and and other parts of west bengal and and so on and so forth right the largest procession there is never any incident never so so if somebody tells you that oh we are held hostage and we can't do it and we can't cope with it and all i uh, find that rather difficult to believe it can be done and it was done at ramnomi itself last year in hyderabad and and the telangana government and the, and the telangana high court proved that it can be done and it should be done the kind of reporting that took place in in A- april uh, 2022 was uh, was uh, 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 highly uh, uh, not just objectionable but i would use the word obnoxious kaun sa toda bhaiya to aap log jaise ye juice corner hai isko pura nahi giraya aapne sirf linter giraya upar wala part giraya iski kya wajah hai it was absolutely obnoxious it was appalling it was not befitting any person who calls themselves uh a uh, uh, you know a, a press person or a, a news reporter or a, or a journalist it was beneath contempt that's all i can say there were there were news reporters who were climbing up onto bulldozers and going with the bulldozers as though it was some victorious army to demolish the uh, homes and shops and readies and and the uh, thelas of poor impoverished people uh there were there were uh, you know people were whip- the the news reporters were whipping up uh, a frenzy uh against uh, you know uh, they were they were uh, acting as as uh, as judge jury and hangman they were they were um, blaming without any evidence whatsoever they were blaming the the people who reside in those areas the people who work in those areas the people who have their small shops in those areas they were blaming them for the riot which boggles the imagination and and when if you uh, you know destroy their uh, their uh, small ready or their their thela they they it it would take them months to rebuild that small little that tiny bit of income which they have it would take them months to rebuild that to just get back to the same position might take them 6 months or a year or they may not even be able to come back to that position